Hello and welcome to lesson 29, Descriptive Analysis. Based on the data types that we collected for our research, we can classify data analysis into quantitative data analysis and qualitative data analysis. And again, quantitative data analysis can be divided into descriptive analysis and inferential analysis according to our research purpose. And today we are going to discuss about descriptive analysis types, that is the measures of frequency distribution, measures of central tendency, and measures of dispersion. Before moving to the discussions of each of them, let's define descriptive and inferential analysis. Descriptive analysis is a type of analysis used to summarize, describe the main features of the sample itself. It also helps us to identify the patterns and trends. It provides a conclusion about the sample itself. It is the most basic data analysis conducted initially to have better, better understanding about the sample. And it also prepares our data for further statistical analysis by detecting the errors and by finding out the outliers, that is, the extreme values, so as to fix them. On the other hand, the inferential analysis is a type of uh, quantitative data analysis which is used to make inferences, conclusions, or predictions about the population based on the randomly taken samples. So here, here it is used, unlike that of the descriptive analysis, it is used to make inference about the population. It is used to estimate the population parameters. By the way, the inferential analysis is used when we want to conclude about the population or when we want to study about the cause and effect relationship between the variables. Moving to the first types of uh, descriptive analysis, that is the measures of uh, frequency distribution. When we say frequency, it is the occurrence of each sample data or the repeatedness of each sample data. So frequency distribution can be described using graphical representation or we can describe using table. Let us see the graphical representation. That is the first one is the bar graph. As you see in the picture, the bar graph represents the frequency of each interval using the bars of equal widths. The bars has equal widths, which shows the interval, and the uh, height of the bar is a representation of the frequency. The bar graph, as you see, has the, an interval, an interval between each uh, bar graph, each consecutive bar graph. So this shows that the bar graph is used for comparing the discrete data categories or the interval data. And the second is the uh, histogram. As you see in uh, the picture, the histogram represents the frequency of each interval of continuous data using bars of equal widths. And there is no interval or there is no gap between the histogram, as you see in the uh, picture. And the histogram is uh, particularly uh, suitable for uh, representing the continuous data distribution because there is no gap between the uh, histogram. And the third is the pie chart. As you see in the uh, picture, the, the pie chart is a circular graph which shows that each slice, each slice of the uh, circle represents the proportion or the relative of the data with respect to the whole data set. And the fourth one is a frequency uh, polygon. The frequency polygon is derived from uh, derived from connecting the midpoints of the class frequency using lines. So when we connect the midpoints of uh, the histograms, the midpoints of the histograms uh, using a line, so we can get this uh, frequency polygon. And when when, when we uh, delete the histograms after connecting the middle points using the lines, so we get the frequency polygon. And it is used for comparing various uh, data sets comparing the frequency of various data sets. And the uh, other is the uh, tabular uh, representations, which organizes any given data into intervals or uh, groups. So uh, it looks like this. So there are different variables in this uh, column. 
column so the gender the age and the occupational group and the category is female male so the frequency can be expressed using uh, table form and the percentage is also expressed like this moving to the measures of central tendency that is central tendency is a statistical measure that represents the data set the whole data set using a single value like mean median and mode mean is a, a mathematical or an arithmetic average it is calculated by dividing the sum of all values by the number of all values and it is highly susceptible to outliers it means that it is highly affected by the extreme values because it is a mathematical average so it can be affected by the outliers and it is accurate representative of the data set for normal distributed data if it is a skewed data it's not uh, represented uh, it cannot represent the data set moving to the median it is a middle the middle of the data set after arranging in order of ascending or descending and sometimes it is a positional average and it's appropriate for ordinal and interval variables and it is not susceptible to outliers or it's not affected by the extreme values because it is a positional average unlike that of the mean this one is a positional average and it's not affected by it's not affected by the extreme values and it is suitable for a skewed distribution it is suitable for either positively or negatively uh, a skewed distribution because it's not affected by the extreme values and the mode is the most frequent value or the most repeated value in the data set and it ranges from no mode sometimes we may not have repeated values and and sometimes we may have more than one mode which is equal repeated values so we may have multiple modes and it is not used in a continuous data because in a continuous data each value has each data has unique values so there is no mode let's take one example and let's calculate the mean so the mean is calculated by adding all the values and dividing by the number of the values so we get this six and when we uh, move to calculate the median so before move before calculating the medians we have to arrange in ascending or descending orders and if the numbers of values are odd so we can just take the middle value if it is even we can take the two middle values and we can take the average of the two middle values in the case in in this case uh, we do have seven values one two three four five six seven so it is odd so we take just the middle value that is six six will be the median and the mode is obviously uh, seven which is repeated two times let's take one another uh, let's take another example so in this example in this new example we just add one extreme value that is 102 uh, to show that the mean is highly affected by the uh, extreme values as you see the new mean is 18 since we added 100 to the extreme values whereas the median uh, when we calculate the median now it is 8 so we take 6 and 7 and we take uh, the average of these two and 6.5 is a new median and as you see it's not highly affected by the uh, addition of the extreme values median is not highly affected by the addition of extreme values and the mode is uh, the same the mode is 7 because uh, 7 is uh, repeated two times proceeding to the measures of dispersion measures of dispersion indicates the variability of our data or how much or to what extent our data is homogeneous or heterogeneous or it indicates how skewed or scattered our data is and it is divided into range variance and a standard division a range is simply the difference between the extremes the difference between the maximum and the minimum value and it is calculated by subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value and the variance is calculated by deducting the mean from each value and squaring that value and adding that value and finally dividing by the total number of values and the uh, formula to find the variance is summations of into the bracket x minus mu uh, closing the bracket square and dividing by n so x uh, represents each values and mu represents the mean 
and the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. The square root of the variance is uh, the standard deviation. Let's take one example to find out the range. So here is an example. So by the way, it is better to make the data in ascending or descending order to find out the range, to find out the two extreme values, the maximum value and the minimum value. It is better to arrange the data either in ascending or descending order. Anyway, uh, this one is a simple data. So the range is 10 minus 3. 10 is the maximum value and 3 is the minimum value. And to find out the variance, first of all, we have to calculate the mean. We have to calculate and the mean is 6, as you see here. So we have to use this formula. When we use this formula, we have to just subtract each, subtract the, the mean from each values. We are subtracting uh, 6 from each value, as you see, and squaring that value and adding that value. Then finally, we have to divide by 7 and we get 4.57. 4.57 will be the variance. And the standard deviation is the square root of what? 4.57. So a standard deviation will be uh, 2.14. Anyway, the larger the standard deviation shows that our data is heterogeneous or scattered or highly variable, whereas the smaller the standard deviation is, uh, indicates, it indicates that the homogeneity of our data or less variability of our data. This is the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe my channel. If you like this video, please like the hit button and share to your friends. Thank you.